Welcome to the Ad Heart Podcast, the podcast that inspires heart-first living. This is where you'll get practical tools to reduce stress, inspire creative action, and energize your personal growth momentum, along with ways to apply these tools. And now, here's your host, Deborah Rosman. Welcome to the Ad Heart Podcast, inspiring forward movement and heart-powered intention. I'm Deborah Rosman, your host, and our podcast topic is your heart's intuitive guidance. My guest for this episode is Agapi Stasinopoulos. Agapi is a motivational speaker and best-selling author of Wake Up to the Joy of You and her newest book, Speaking with Spirit, which is about harnessing the power of prayer and your heart as an ongoing conversation with something larger than yourself and how to listen to find connection, peace, and gratitude. Agapi also facilitates workshops and seminars for Thrive Global, a company founded by her sister, Ariana Huffington, to help change the way we work and live throughout the world and prevent burnout. Welcome, Agapi. It is so good to have you here. It's wonderful to be with you, Deborah. I wish we were a little closer So we could have a real heart-to-heart hug. But what can we do? We are going to, you know, do okay just um, extending our heart energy to each other. I'm in New York City. And where are you? I'm in Boulder Creek, California, on the opposite coast, near Santa Cruz, near the Pacific Ocean. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, what a blessing. And uh, I, I feel somehow we've all had to accommodate and find new ways to connect uh, through this whole um, pandemic, through the Zoom. And uh, uh, for me, you know, I have to say being a Greek extrovert, um, it's challenging. I don't know about you, but I have found it very challenging. I miss the human connection. And whenever I get it, I I miss speaking at, at, at events. I was in Los Angeles recently and I spoke for the first time in two years, uh, to two people. And honestly, you couldn't get me off the stage. <laughs> well, you know, the heart energy goes right through all the time and space, just like it is here through our sound, through Zoom, through our photos. And that's the beauty of it. We are all connected in the heart. And yes, it's different when we're in person, it's, but it's I live through that heart energy connection. Yes, and, absolutely. We, you can be in it uh, as we choose, you know, as you so beautifully say in your book, uh, every day we can choose it. That's right. Well, you know, what I think is interesting, HeartMath researched the heart-brain-spirit connection for over 30 years. And what I love most in my meditations and heart work is when I get intuitive guidance, when I get that aha, when I get that inspiration and direction, because it gives me that sense of security that I know where to go, what to do. And there's got a confirmation, a warm hearted confirmation. And our research has found that it's received first through the heart, then transmitted to the brain mind, which translates these frequencies, these energies of intuition into feelings or words or images in our own language so we can understand them. And that's where the book, Heart's Intelligence and the Intuitive Guidance for Effective Choices and Solutions comes from. And your book, Speaking with Spirit, in a whole different way, but the same realization, talks about the heart's intuitive connection through prayer. And I know there's many books on prayer but yours has a little different frequency and maybe you could share with everyone how speaking with spirit is a little different. I think uh, from what um, a lot of people who have read and are reading the book have said to me is they feel they're given permission to open up their heart to have a conversation with the divine. And you know, when we say divine or God, it's like, I always ask the listeners to put whatever name connects inside of you. It could be, you know, my high self. It could be my soul, my spirit, the the universe, whatever name it is. It is that larger frequency, that larger presence that lives in all of us. So when people um, have have, uh, speaking with spirit and they read it, they always say to me, 
I felt like I had become numb to that energy, that I have become doing my life on automatic one day after the other and kind of feeling there is something there, but not really making it conscious. So what I wanted to do with this book, and as you know, I have 52 prayers for just about everything, even a prayer about the, yes, you can be happy after divorce. (laughs) (laughs) And a prayer of how to lose weight, I call it the God diet, Um, is that I, the, I, I saw it uh, in the pandemic when I was writing this book during the pandemic in lockdown in a home in LA. I was feeling uh, really hurting. I mean, my heart was hurting mm-hmm. because I felt um, I was asked to go into a deeper place within me. I was asked to find that place beyond my friends and going to do the normal things that we all did and especially the speaking to live audiences, which for me is my bliss. Um, When I am in the presence of people, my heart just absolutely expands to capacity. (laughs) And um, so in writing this book, I had to go into a stillness. I had to go into a quiet place. I had to find the spirit beyond all that. And I found that as I had a conversation with God, as, uh, and I said it all, I, I, I have a prayer in the book called How to Find the Extraordinary in the Ordinary. And actually, in that prayer, I actually told the divine, I'm bereft. I'm feeling absolutely lost. And I feel that the, the thing I love the most has been taken away from me. And what I encourage people is to first own and offer your humanness exactly where you are, and then open up to receive the spirit. And then the spirit speaks to us and says the guidance of what we need to do at that particular moment. And I want to read that phrase that so lifted me, which is on chapter seven, finding the extraordinary in the ordinary on uh, page 37, and I started to feel, where do I find God's pleasure? And it is a um, a phrase, Deborah, that I heard in the movie Chariots of Fire that I recommend to everybody. It's a most uplifting movie where the protagonist is an athlete and he's running at the beach and, and he hears the voice that says, where does the power come from to win the race? And he hears the voice that says, the power comes from within. And his love is to be a runner, but he's also a missionary. And his sister says to him, um, Little, I think his name is Little. I, I, his name is actually Eric Little. That's right. And it's a true story. Eric, you should stop running and give up this silly habit of yours, this hobby of yours, and and devote yourself to God and be a missionary. And he says to her, but when I run, I feel his pleasure. Mm. And that phrase to me is like, I ask people, Deborah, every time I have this conversation, where do you find the spirit's pleasure in you? That's where you live. That's where your heart is. That's where you connect. And it could be in cooking. It could be in singing. It could be in in, um, putting your child to sleep. It could be breaking bread with friends. It, it, It could be running up the mountain. It could be walking at the beach, feeding the seagulls. So the phrase that I have here, when I was praying to find my joy again during the pandemic, and I told exactly how I was feeling, that I was really feeling bereft. This is what I heard spirit and my heart say, the trees still grow upward and I'm able to walk on this earth through the law of gravity. And even that is a miracle. For whatever reason, my ego and my sense of self move into righteous indignation, and God forbid I might miss 
the awe that I so seek in the simplest of things. So the earth, beloved, still moves around the sun in perfect motion. And how amazing is that? There are invisible worlds of millions of stars and planets that are moving in perfect relation to one another. And they don't seem to collide. The ocean meets the shore in perfect rhythm, even when it's turbulent and stormy. Let me wrap my mind around all of that and know that I too have perfect harmony within me. So be it. Beautifully said, you know, as you were sharing that, it pondered everything in the universe, except the human mind, which separates and creates chaos where we don't perceive that we're in harmony with others. Everything else is in harmony. And it's through the heart that I've learned to perceive that oneness, that harmony, and the love that orchestrates all of that and the heart's connection, which is where your work and heart mass work, our work comes together is in the heart is knowing that that is where people can find their connection with something larger with who they really are. You know, one of the things you and I talked about right before we started this recording was the importance of acting on the intuitive prompting, the intuitive inspiration. When as Doc Childe, our founder, says in the Heart Intelligence book, act on it while the heat from inspiration is still warm. Because it could be many moons before that particular intuitive insight or prompting or inspiration comes back. And that's the pleasure. That's what gives us that joy, exactly. that, that joy connection. And the quicker we act on our heart's intuitive guidance, the wider the channel becomes, the more connected we are. And I want to encourage our listeners to act on it because sometimes they feel it's too simple. Mm-hmm. You know, like for example, I give you a very simple example. At 12 30 yesterday, at our home, at our apartment in New York, there was Ariana's assistance and, and uh, doing a lot of things, preparing for a lot of things we had to do. And there was a lot of boxes outside our door. And I, I, And the housekeeper wasn't coming till later. And I said, I'm going to take these boxes down to the basement right now. Now, I never do that during the day. You know, something said, I want to get them out of here. And I was dressed. I had a lunch to go to. But I said, I'm going to do it now. And um, Horatio, who works with Ariana, said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm taking them to the basement. Well, I go down to the basement and the elevator stops at the lobby. This wonderful woman comes in a very elegant tall and i say she says i'm going to the fourth floor we live on the sixth floor and i say to her well yes you know me greek i talk to everybody i said why why, who is on the fourth floor he said my friend jenna i i am visiting with her and i said oh that's interesting said to me where are you from i said i'm greek she turns to me and she talks she talks to me in greek and I, she says, uh, my name is Constantina in Greek, and I'm here for this NFT um, conference. And I said, she said, Agapi, Agapi, oh my God, your name means love. I love your name. What do you do? And I said, I write spiritual books and I talk about God and connection. She said, oh my God, I'm having the chills all over. I love spirituality. I meditate. I said, well, come to my apartment. She comes over. I give her a copy of my book. We exchanged numbers. I I said, I have to run. I have a lunch. We're having drinks on Saturday. So again, what made me do that at that moment? I don't know. I don't, I didn't think about it, but I listened to it. That is the key. And that's where people can call it magic or flow or nonlinear, but that's where the adventure of life for me comes in as we listen to the heart's guidance, more of those kinds of synchronicities happen. And you step back and you marvel and gratitude for that. But like you said, the whole universe is set up that way. The stars, the planets, everything moves in a harmonious order. Even when it's chaos, it doesn't seem like it's disrupting the basic order. And as we listen to our heart's guidance, our mind then can carry out what our heart suggests. And that's the perfect use 
of the heart, brain, mind, body connection. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it lifts humanity. It lifts us to another level. And, you know, I ponder agape, the world situation and all the stress and anxiety and burnout. And we're into spirituality, but until people learn to get along with each other, it's going to be hard to really create that kind of harmony and that shift. Yes. So I like taking this personal growth, personal connection that you and I are talking about. And how do you think we can each individually access our heart's wisdom to help the collective to raise the vibration at this time of great crisis and challenge so that there is less polarization so that people can see each other's hearts. And well, I think that's exactly why I, I believe so much in prayer, because when you look at the horrific news that we and people say, well, I'm, it's not enough to just do pray, good thoughts and prayers. I said, definitely, it's not enough, but it's also a priority mm -hmm. because you can donate, you can go and act and you can, you know, um, send money for the homeless. You can, you know, do everything you can on the material world. You can join an organization that's doing the actions and everything. But if you're not doing that, can you send heart energy? Right. And like as, can you send those frequencies to Ukraine right now? You and I can do it right now as we're talking about it. Right. When we are watching the news, when you see something in social media, can you write in there and take time so that you don't absorb all the stress of the world? So then you are undermining and depleting your immune system, your heart energy, your your uh, your your physical and emotional uh, body gets so depleted by yeah. judging it. But it's hard, you know. It's hard because as as you so beautifully believe and say, the heart is so connected to the other hearts. So when we see the suffering, it's very difficult to be so disciplined to stay in our joy and in our heart expansion. You know, first responders, and we do a lot of heart math training to first responders, teaching them tools to get heart brain aligned so that you can have true compassion and true care without going into the overcare and the pity and the worry because first responders can't afford to do that if they're really going to help us. You know, in an accident, they go, they have the heart and the care. They're not cold. They have the compassion they're trained to. Oh, they oh. take care of us. And when we watch the news, I know when I watch the news, especially like the recent news with Ukraine and you see all this tragedy and horrific yes, pictures, yes. I've learned to go to my heart and knowing the science, like you're saying, that if I go into the empathetic sympathy that's unmanaged, I'm going to just drain. Absolutely. But if I can really breathe through my heart and just really stay heart centered, Yes. And then put out a pure, purest as I can, sense of feeling of care, compassion, or kindness. It lifts my vibration. So I know intuitively that my heart energy is cleaner and even more effective as it goes to those people who are suffering. And yes. that is a practice that I do daily. And we do at HeartMath and teach others because just like you said, it's so important to open our hearts, but know how to truly care from that higher vibration that's regenerative for you and me and each other, rather than draining. Because I'll tell you, overcare, which is uh, like a virus, you know, if you have any heart at all, it's so easy to feel like that overcare, it's hard. But I used to say my mother had a doctorate, a PhD in overcare, because it was constantly, you know, are you wearing warm enough clothes? Did you take your vitamins? Did you? And it pushes people <laughs> away. <laughs> it's care, but it pushes. Mother's, it's a mother's love, right? <laughs> exactly. But when you have that cleaner care, that coherent care, you have more intuitive guidance. Your intuition okay. then guides you. To what's going to be that. effective. I love that. I love, I never thought about it 
you know, the overcare, because I definitely have that. I mean, I cannot tell you how um, much I work on the pattern. And I actually have a, a, a prayer in the book called uh, How to Handle Being an Empath, How to Navigate Being an Empath. And, uh, and that's a prayer that I have about can I, and it's automatic. I might run into an, an old friend in the street and I might feel fantastic. And then, you know, I talk to them for 10 minutes and I go home and I go, man, I just feel weird. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel my whole energy dropped and, and I go, I have to go meditate for at least an hour to clear that energy now. Mm-hmm. You know, so people say, oh, protect yourself, put light around you and everything. I don't know. It doesn't really all it work that way. I mean, if you have an open heart, which I do, as you know, and my heart is wide open, I I always have to go give it over to your higher power. Let them be who they are. Go into a consciousness of elevation. And the more I elevate and and stay lifted and have, you know, my own techniques and, and ways of coming up, up, yes. up, up, and then giving them over and telling Agape, I'm not responsible for their happiness. I'm not responsible to take in their despair or suffering or upsetness. Can I hold the loving space? And, you know, it just does not always easy. No, it isn't. But there in the chapter in the Heart Intelligence book, it's called Compassion, the Need of the Times. And there's a whole section on unmanaged empathy. You know how beautiful empathy is. That's an incredible gift to have that open hearted empathy. And there's an exercise in there that you can use in the moment. I do on overcare, when you start to feel the energy drain or the empathy turn into sympathy and start to drain, how to catch it and move right back into the higher vibration in the moment and go back into the regenerative care and compassion, which is more effective for whoever you're talking to as well as yourself. So there's an exercise in there. Try it. Let me know how it works for you. Absolutely. I will. Thank you so much. Yes. Of how to stay centered in yourself and, and not be so much in bonding with them. And yet you're still, you're loving at a higher vibration. You're caring and having compassion at higher vibration. And the trick is I used to think that that was cold or that I was somehow (laughs) cut off, but it's not. You're you're actually more in spirit and you're more connected and you have more intuition on how to really help them than when you're emotionally identified and then you go home and you're drained. It's a world of difference. I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this because so many people have that experience and this wasn't planned as our topic, but spirit no, and not intuition. At all. Exactly. Yeah. No, and I think I, I, especially now, Deborah, that we get bombarded with yes with the news of polarization. It's yes. uh, it's it's an exercise in vigilance and in higher consciousness. It is, and we need to learn how to do the shift in the moment rather than just meditate in the morning, knowing that <laughs> challenges could happen and then meditate to recover from all of this at the end of the day. The tool, if we can have tools to shift and to recognize, to shift in the moment, to check our feeling world, we call it spot check. It's a term we use here and see what's going on and then know how to shift the vibration Yes. Right in the moment. It keep the heart open. Keep the heart open. I mean, that's the, the thing that I also wanted to bring up while we're talking about this is how we all have feelings yes. that are the human feelings, you know, and they happen in the day, you know, like uh, somebody, uh, you overhear somebody talking about something and they're not including you, let's say. You know, are you feeling left out about something that's going on that you're not part of, or you are feeling um, stuck about something, or jealous, yeah. or, or comparisons? And I, I feel 
And I speak a lot about this to my spiritual, sort of spiritual, I mean, the people who are on the path consciously, where I say, you cannot do a spiritual bypass. That's you know, right. feelings are feelings and they are, you have a right to feel these feelings because they come with your human body. <laughs> so when you feel them, instead of going, oh, well, but, you know, I have studied so many years in this, and I meditate for every day for twice a day, and I shouldn't have these feelings. I go, no, you have these feelings. You're not your feelings. So can we put them on your right hand and own them? And on your left hand, you have your presence. You have your soul. You have your your heart. You have the vibration of your beauty, of your amazing consciousness that is in sync with the universe. And the bridge is your heart and prayer. And what I mean by prayer is that you offer it and you say, I ask right now that in this moment that I'm experiencing this and you do it right in the moment, that I do not judge this feeling, that I do do not feel I am less than because I'm experiencing this. And I ask right now that I offer this vibration of this feeling that I'm judging and transmit it into my loving. Yes. And And that acceptance, that embracing, that taking the heart and wrapping it around whatever we're feeling and releasing the doubts and the judgments, that's what can help lift our vibration to a new baseline and develop that self-security, which is what it's really all about. And that self-regulation and empowerment to do that. It's not repression of feelings. It's not venting them. But as we learn to do that, we become less judgmental of others. We can accept their hurts and fears and feelings that are behind why they have polarized views and biases that are different from ours. But rather than create that fight, we have that embracing of heart and compassion that allows the lift of vibration so that we can understand each other and begin to heal getting along. It doesn't mean we have to agree with each other, but that understanding is what true heart, compassion, and care is about. To me, that's a higher bit. I mean, I think that is so beautiful. Exactly. And I feel... Um, what happened to me, as you know, many, many years ago when I had this unbound heart opening and I wrote a book about it called Unbinding the Heart. It was a very visceral experience of where I felt the heart of everyone and that we were one heart. Yeah. So now when I look at people and people say to me, my God, you, you, you know, I can go into a room and start to talk to anybody. You know, it doesn't matter because I feel... I feel they're they're like me. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. I feel like what's there to hide? And but my heart is open to them because I got this awareness very clearly over the years after you know that experience that I had with my spiritual teacher. And I felt if I go through these difficult moments and 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 if I go through these ups and downs in my life, and if I have these feelings and this um, angst about life, whatever I have, everybody has it, Agape. So that when I look at people now, and I, and I immediately have a sense of compassion mm. because I feel, oh my God, we are all in it together. Right, right. And, and, and can I keep moving into greater and greater loving, Deborah, which I think is exactly your message and and your kindness and just the passion that you have with your work. And I do too, to really help humanity awaken um, and help each other awaken. Even, Even all of us who are very blessed to even listen to this podcast, because if you're listening to this podcast, that means you're already, you're already there. But still, you were going through things, right? Because right. I'm- And we want to support each other because it's all at this next level of vibration and energetics. It goes out into the planet. 
exactly. it goes out into the field environment as the heart math research is showing. And that we're connected on that level. It's not just some woo woo thing. It's a real electromagnetic connection. And the research is showing that can help lift the vibration and help other people begin to open their hearts or start thinking about, hmm, maybe there's 